Ladies and gentlemen, if you'll take your seats, please. Welcome to the show where the street is the courtroom and science is in the dark. Coming up, man for heart op meets donor for the chop. Designer drugs in milk. But first, we track down a new hospital guaranteed free from animal testing. We sent in our own TV doc, Dr. John Carver, to give it a full checkup. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Welcome to the Cruelty Free Medical Emporium, the only hospital which guarantees that nothing has been tested on animals. All right. Well, I'd like to book in one of my patients, a Mrs. Stilton, for a hip replacement operation. Certainly, sir. Oh. Sorry. I'm afraid hip replacements were tested on dogs. Ah, no matter. How about a little penicillin, perhaps? We don't stock antibiotics here, sir. Too much respect for the guinea pigs. It's not my lucky day, is it? Um, well, makers, if you please. See, dogs. Kidney dialysis? Sheep. Parkinson's disease? Lobsters. Leprosy? Armadillos. Um, Memory loss? Mm. Slugs. Ah. All right, then. Um, have you got a little insulin, perforce? Oh, I'm afraid we don't have much call for insulin around here, sir. Not much call. It's the single most popular diabetic treatment in the world. Rats, dogs, anglerfish. Do you have anything of use in this place at all? Yes. Oh. I've got some peppermint round the back. It's very good for indigestion. It's not really much of a hospital, is it? I'm afraid we can't help with anything on your list, sir. We've too much respect for animals here, you oh, see. This is giving me a headache. Oh, I don't suppose you... Uh, no. The benefits of animal testing are undeniable. But are the sacrifices of animals in science always justified? Oleg Gazenko was a top scientist in the Soviet space program. I work in my laboratory. Over there, in Star City. By night, Gazenko roamed the streets of Moscow on a secret mission. venture into space, but you, courageous animals, must lead the way. Where you lead, my friends, I hope we shall safely follow. Meanwhile, the chief designer was building a spaceship for Gazenko's recruits. On the 3rd of November, 1957, the rocket was ready for the chosen dog, Laika. Comrades, we saw space traveler Laika, this brave Soviet dog will be the first living creature in orbit! 3, 2, 1, 0, ignition, lift off! Opening the door, lift off! The trajectory is looking good, but what are we the bitch is in orbit! Dogs eat in orbit. Can my dog meet Laika? When's she coming home? Sadly, in the rush to beat the Americans into space, no one had designed a way to get Laika back to Earth. After seven days in orbit, the oxygen ran out, and Laika died.
40 years later, Gazenko was finally allowed to share his feelings about the mission. Work with animals is a source of suffering to all of us. We treat them like babies who cannot speak. The more time passes, the more I am sorry about it. We should not have done it. We did not learn enough from the mission to justify the death of the dog. Today, I witnessed an emotional meeting with his future donor. I'm here today with heart patient Ian Dulgence, who today is going to meet the donor who could save his life. Ian, how does it feel to meet the man who's going to give you his heart? Oh. No, he's not the donor, he's my brother. And the donor and his brother are actually here. Genetic researcher Francis Furter told us more. Well, there's a real shortage of um, human donors for people like Ian. Um, so we felt that uh, the pigs could be the answer. I've actually snipped out some of their genes to make the organs more suitable for humans. Are you the donor? So what are your plans after the transplant? Well, I was thinking of going on an adventure holiday. And do you have any plans after the operation? from genetically altered pigs sounds unnatural, unethical even. But does the alternative hearts from human donors seem any less disturbing? What is driving Christian Barnard? In a blaze of publicity, he's travelled the globe since performing the world's first heart transplant. After time out in Hollywood, an audience with a pope and dinner with Sophia Loren, our very own heart doc is still the nation's heart throb. This afternoon, we'll have Chris live in the studio to tell us about the day he made history. Scalpel. Suction. Distolic BP less than 20. I'm removing the diseased heart and switching on the bypass machine. I'm, I'm staring at an empty chest cavity. No one's ever seen a living patient like this before. Keep calm, Chris, keep calm. Get the donor heart. The first ever heart donor, Denise Darval. 25 years old, Denise was certified brain dead after an horrific car accident. But her heart is still healthy. A life support machine keeps her body breathing. Scalpel. Rib spreader. Monkey wrench. Time to turn off the life support. Christian nailing the barnard and removing the heart from that young woman's body, you stand accused of murder. My brother, for your pioneering services to cardiac surgery, you are awarded this year's Nobel Prize. Christiane Needling Burner, transplant pioneer, knows that only Ozo can deal with those oh so difficult to remove stains. No! Uncertain of the legal boundaries of death, Barnard lets Denise's heart stop before removing it. K. 
Come on, come on. Get started, get started. Come on. Professor Barnard, let me give you my heartfelt thanks. I feel like a new man on the first Frankenstein. Barnard's pioneering work, four out of five heart transplant patients now live for at least two years after surgery. But there are three transplant patients for every heart available in the UK. And many donor hearts come from healthy young people killed in road traffic accidents. Injecting genes into sheep embryos, they were looking for new sources of human medicine. Work was tedious and unrewarding, until... Astounding! We will want to know about this. It's the first step to making new drugs that are tailor-made for people. It could save lives and make money. Better be careful, though. I don't want people to get the wrong idea. Once the cat's out of the bag, who knows what will be waiting at her doorstep? What on earth can I do? Perhaps I can help you with a little PR. If you're looking for something new this season, why not check out Donna? Her vital statistics? Well, she has no father, but is genetically identical to one of her two mothers. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Dolly is a clone. So, what's her secret recipe? Well, we simply took a cell from one mother, pulled out the DNA, popped it into an egg cell of her other mother, Planted it into the womb. And hey Presto, we had Dolly. Oh look everyone, here's their designer, Ian Wilmot. Hello. The PR company knew how much the sheep meant to us, so they didn't want the press to trash it out of hand. The first thing they said was, give the sheep a name. People like a name, so we call her Dolly. <coughs> Within days, the story broke, and Dolly was on the front page of every newspaper in the world. Dr Wilmot, why did you do it? Make Dolly? Well, cloning is really a means to an end. One day, we could genetically alter sheep to make human medicines in their milk. If we could clone animals routinely, we could make whole herds of life-saving animals like this. People have so much to gain from this. I had to find a way to sell it to the press. 